Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Rajesh, and uh, I'm the Senior Manager of Marketing for Data Dynamics. And I would love to welcome you all to the first ever episode of our series called as Data Jam. In this series, we pick the minds of some of the industry's best when it comes to unstructured data management and cloud migration. And I have one such expert with me, Mr. Danny O'Connor. Danny, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Rajesh. I, um, I've put my data dynamics football shirt on specially. I, f I feel a little bit like a walking billboard, but um, I shall <laughs> plow on regardless. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, why don't you tell us a little about yourself, Danny, to the entire audience who is listening? Yeah, sure. No problem. Um, firstly, and most importantly, I've been married to my wife, Alison, for 35 years, and we've got three daughters and a granddaughter literally on the way. Um, my daughter's in hospital and hopefully within the next few hours, uh, we'll have a granddaughter. Um, wow. I was born in London. Yeah, I was born in London, 1961 and have a younger sister. Um, I, I initially went to state schools and then my parents sent me to a private school at around the age of 12. Um, I ended up being a head boy. Uh, mainly due to my activities on the sports field rather than any <laughs> academic capability or achievement, I have to say. I went to uh, Brighton Polytechnic to do a HND in computing. And then in 1992, I got a job with Bankers Trust, splitting paper in a computer room, basically putting reports into a bag for a messenger to deliver to the trading floor. Um, I realised early on that management was a much better route for me than actually working and uh, fairly quickly became head of data centre operations. I then had a number of infrastructure and management roles across a few banks, including Deutsche Bank, Merrill Lynch, Bank of America and ING. So I've done my corporate tour of duty. Um, after leaving ING in 2013, I moved to the sell side. I joined a consultancy called Tory Global, where I learned a lot. I then moved to another consultancy called Virtual Clarity, where I learned even more. Um, we got bought by DXC in 2019. And obviously now I'm at Data Dynamics, which is a very different gig from consulting as it's 100% about the software. Well, you've seen it all, right? Yes, I'm not a youngster. <laughs> I've been around a while. Uh, well, that brings perfectly to my second question, in fact. So you've been part of the financial industry for over a decade now, and I'm sure you've seen Three the, decades, three decades, uh, right? Yeah. Over three decades. So over three decades, right? So you would have seen the, the 2008 uh, recession, right? So that was really bad. And when, when the future recession on the way, right, we are seeing most of the companies or enterprises taking the same steps they had done in 28. Do, do you think that that's the best thing that the world, uh, you know, that's the best thing for the enterprises to do or are, are they missing out on something? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't quite agree with the premise of the question, but a little bit of history. So back in the 90s, we used to do cost cutting exercises in the corporate world. And uh, this usually consisted of um, things like not having biscuits in meeting rooms or using cheaper recycled plastic cup pencils and putting a ban on travel for six months and we never really scratched the service of driving in true savings but everyone felt that they were doing the right thing and cutting down the expense base from a technology centric view the banks did a lot of things to become more efficient but it wasn't until the 2000s and especially the financial crisis that highlighted a different approach was needed so not only was it a case of immediate saves by cutting spend, uh, it's a shame we'd already saved on biscuits and pencils in the previous decade, um, but by day, they did things like delaying investment in technology, reducing headcount and reducing change programs. It also meant better controls were needed and more risk, a more risk averse approach. So we saw some investment, but only in programs that dealt with risk mitigation or were investments that truly drove operational efficiencies in run rate so as we potentially head into another re recession i th actually think the financial industry is far better prepared than it was previously for a start they all have to have reserves of cash which i think was one of the big issues before when there was potential for runs on the banks and um, so they keep that cash as an insurance policy so they're definitely 
more liquid than they ever were. But the things that are important today are operational resilience, keeping everything available to the end client, risk mitigation and compliance, including keeping the regulators happy, which sort of loops back to the focus on controls, checks and balances, which sort of was an outcome of the previous crisis. Um, change programs still happen. Desire to move to cloud, getting out of the business of running your own data centers, supporting change events driven by acquisitions and divestitures, and of course, still trying to drive in cost efficiencies that never ever goes away. Yeah, um, yeah. We all, we also see a, an increased awareness and a desire to understand data. And if, as a custodian of clients' data, ensuring it's secured, protected, and available on demand. But to be clear, I answer the question, I think everyone is far more aware of risks and generally more cautious. Okay. Um, so, so I think lessons have been learned to answer your question. Right, right, great. So, um, well, then... Just, just g let's give it a thought, right? So, what are the three best practices would you recommend to to enterprises right now to to remain sustainable and profitable? I don't know if I have three, but there's one that definitely try not to run multi-year transformation programs with unrealistic committed outcomes. <laughs> I, you see it time and time again, right? Five-year programs that cost a fortune and just don't work. That yeah. the money is always spent and more. And the results are always questionable as to when reflecting back on the original business case. So I would say try and avoid those big transformation programs rather than a transformation, evolution at a slower and more pragmatic pace um, with an expectation that there will be surprises and reasons to slow up or take a time out because of something unexpected, a financial crisis, an unexpected war, a natural disaster, exactly, uh, etc. So. Yeah, maybe don't be an early adopter. Uh, we've seen we've seen companies who publicly announce a full commitment to move to cloud and invariably fall well below expected outcomes, and um, for lots of good reasons and a few not so good reasons. So, so what do you have to say to those companies, right? So when they prepare a plan, right, so that we're going to move to the cloud. Now, now, what's the best uh, approach? Would you say that those enterprises have to take? Uh, in order to ensure that they adopt the digital first journey. So so what we've seen, a lot of people jumped on the cloud bandwagon and declared that they were going to move to the cloud without really understanding why, what the benefits were. And also the big thing, which is obviously where data dynamics plays a big part, is understanding your existing environment before you make decisions. The, the data is a key part of that. Understand what you've got who owns it, where it is, what value it gives you, and what you need to do with it before you then go and start adopting uh, various cloud offerings. I think that the companies who seem today to be doing the best are the ones that are ev they're evolving rather than transforming. So they're evolving into a hybrid model based on needs and requirements. And obviously, you need to understand what it is you're trying to achieve. So rather yeah. than just declare an aspirational end state and reverse engineer programs into it, those that just naturally um, evolve into some in-house stuff, some external stuff on a private nature, some public services, don't declare a single cloud provider as your target end state. But basically, you know, there's some pros and cons for all of them. But just go where the business needs and requirements take you. And they seem to be in a much better place, both financially and from a business continuity perspective. Great. Great. Well, that makes sense. For, yeah, it does. It does. So, I mean, thanks. Thanks a lot for that info, Danny. And uh, well, before we proceed, you know, I think that the audience would love to know would love to decode Danny Dick, Danny O'Connor a little bit more, right? So that could be dangerous. Ah, uh, well, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a rapid fire five questions. It's just you know two choices. You gotta select one. You okay. Ready? Yeah. All right. So let's go. Danny O'Connor, coffee or beer? Based on volume consumed, it has to be beer. <laughs> okay. Dog or cat? Or I've had cats, but currently we've got two dogs, a West Highland Terrier and a Cairn Terrier. So it has to be dogs. 
Okay. Mountains or beaches? Uh, definitely beaches. I'm not big on heights. Funnily enough, I'm not big on heights ever since I climbed a huge mountain as a kid. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. Well, you're based out of uh, England. And based on some of the recent events, this gonna this is going to be an interesting one. Cricket or football? Oh, yeah. So great result at the weekend. Oh, um, uh, yeah. I, this is tough, right? Because... I like both. Um, I like both. So, but uh, as I pl as I played football until my forties, I suppose it has to be football. Really? Ah, oh, yeah. I never thought that. I know, I know, but yeah. Probably. Okay. Uh, this one's based on your three decades of experience, right? So, what would you prefer, multinational or startups? That's a tough one. There's pros and cons for both, especially <laughs> early on. Uh, early on in the career, multinationals obviously is a is a great place to learn. But I must admit, I like the startup world. It, it's much more fun, much more dynamic. You can have an idea in the morning and execute it in the afternoon. So, yep. uh, yeah, I think I think startups for where I am now. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for that, Danny. And uh, one final question before I let you go. Uh, what do you think? I mean, you've worked in multiple companies, right? So so what do you think gives data dynamics an edge? Why is why do you think data dynamics is a cut above the rest? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. To be honest, um a bit of an a bit of a lazy answer on this one from me, but it but it is true and it's our people. I think our people at data dynamics are brilliant and although we're spread across the globe we're very connected as a company and we generally have good fun when we yep. interact with each other which i really like also our clients often comment on the quality capability competency and commitment of our people so i know it's an easy answer but i do think it's true i think it's our people are absolutely really absolutely i completely agree to that all right. So, well, we come to an end of the first ever episode of Data Jam with uh, Danny O'Connor. And my name is Rajesh. I'm the Senior Manager for Marketing for Data Dynamics. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. We will come back in future with some other, with, with multiple other people. And uh, hope you'll love those episodes as well. Thank you. Thanks, Rajesh.